So we have some updates. Um, first off, I saw the cardiologist yesterday, and this one's actually kind of smart. And he listened to me. It was it was amazing. It was amazing. Okay, so here's the shunt. It's I don't know if you can see it. It's doing okay. It's healing. Um, but lately, I mean, I went to the ER once because I was like, oh my gosh, every time I try to do something, my heart rate just goes and it just jacks right up and I feel like I'm going to die and they get really short of breath. And it would be anything from just like walking back and forth in the house or trying to pull some weeds in my garden, or trying to vacuum. Oh my goodness. I tried to vacuum and I felt like I'd run a marathon. And, I mean, I'm used to running half marathons, so that was just really weird. And it all kind of just relates to the fact that, you know, the pressures are different inside my head. So the nervous system is keying off different things with the heart. And the heart's just like, oh my gosh, horrible things are happening. And it just jacks the heart rate right up. Well, then that starts a cascade of other things. And then I start to feel short of breath. And then I can't do anything. But... The cardiologist kind of sort of understood this whole process, which was really cool. So his idea was to put me on beta bloggers. I've been a nurse for a really long time. They kind of scared me a little bit. I ended up arguing with them a little bit. Mike kind of calmed me down. Um, so I'm taking a short acting beta blocker that will be out of my system before I go to sleep. See so how my resting heart rate dips down into the low 50s. Which is why I argued with him a little bit. Because he's like, well, you know, if you have a healthy heart, other things will take over. You don't really have to worry about it. You know, yada. It's, so I'm on the, the short acting one, just 25 milligrams during the day. I'll tell you what, though. I think it helped. Because I went outside and I started to do some weeding. And I actually was able to do some weeding. Didn't feel like I was going to die. I mean, I got worn out pretty quick just because I'm not used to being able to do anything for so long. So now I still need to work myself back up to actually doing things, I guess. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Just working myself back up to doing things. But yeah. You know, when, when I was hot to him and I told him about the fact that I just can't do anything. My chest starts hurting and, and everything else. And it was good news. He looked at all the scans and everything else. And he doesn't think there's any blood clots anywhere. And the heart looks okay. And, and you know, the lungs look okay. But, uh, yeah, I talked about the baroreceptors and the fact that everything kind of needs to figure it back out again <laughs> now that the shunt's taking the fluid that used to be really 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 high pressure and my poor heart was getting used to a medicine <laughs> that I was taking to keep myself awake because I was so fatigued from the pressure being so high that my brain was telling me to go to sleep and not do anything because the pressure was so high so I was taking medicine just to stay awake. So my heart was trying to get used to me taking that medicine and the pressure being high and whatever else that did to my nervous system and my heart. And then all of a sudden, all the pressures changed. And it all came out. Don't get me wrong, it felt great. I mean, I think my body was literally storing fluid in every little nook and cranny it could find. I swear I felt it come out of like my legs and my arms and just it just overnight it felt like a lead curtain had come off of me and the bear let go of my head. But now I think it's like swinging the other way because my head feels like a raisin and and my spine feels like marionette strings are pulling up really tight. Especially where the sacral nerve comes out of the spine, around my butt. It goes down the sides of my hips. Oh. But anyways, I'm swinging the pendulum back and forth, I guess. Oh, sorry. There you go. Pendulum, you know, 
I had way, 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 way too much fluids. And then it goes back the other way. I felt great overnight for the first week. Get rid of all the fluids. And I kept going and going and going. Now I feel like a raisin with marionette strings. But the last night it was weird. It felt like there was like warmth below the region of where the shunt is. Like I could feel it. It feels like there's something behind my eye. And above my sinus, because I had the sinus clean out surgery, the functional endoscopic sinus surgery, because, well. Even though the sinus doctor says that the whole pressure thing had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I had sinus polyps. I had sinus polyps and a horrible, horrible, horrible sinus infections. <laughs> yeah, that was between rounds of, of me having really bad symptoms with the intracranial hypertension. Yay. Strangely enough, though... Having antibiotics and the um, prednisone, like megadoses after megadose after megadose when they were trying to make the sinus stuff go away, I felt a lot better from the intracranial hypertension too for a little while until I got all better from the sinus surgery. I mean, all better from the sinus surgery and then, and then the intracranial hypertension was kind of like in between rounds. And then I finally got to the point where I started running again. It was great. I was like, oh my gosh, I can finally start running again. So amazing. My first actual run. That's when I learned that my uterus is trying to kill me. Yeah, it's been an adventure. It really has. But anyways, currently... It almost feels like there's another spot. Not the choroid plexus. Yes, that's the area that makes the CSF usually where they put the little tip of the tube and adjust the pressure. But it feels like there's some other spots down below that have actually started to say, hey, we need to make some fluids because everything's not going so well. And it felt kind of warm there in those two areas this morning. It's the first time that happens. So I don't know. Maybe some other spots are starting to say it's time to re-wet the sponge. That'd be nice. Maybe that's what the neurosurgeon means by letting your body get used to it and that it actually literally takes six weeks for other places to start to make fluids. <sighs> don't know. But I will keep everybody posted. But that's the current situation with the heart. On a beta blocker now. And feeling slightly better. Okay. Yes. That's... That's about where it's at. Slightly better. Every day. 